I started teaching 14 years ago, and I totally hated it. It was awful. I cried all the time. I cried on the way to school. I cried at school. I cried a lot. Um, I hated it so much that in my third year teaching, I went part-time just so I could get my bearings, and I was completely stressed out. And I wasn't alone. Apparently, thousands of teachers leave the profession in the first five years of teaching. For me, I don't think it's much of a surprise. Um, the cat's totally out of the bag. Much of mainstream education simply does not work for teachers or for students. For me, what didn't work was that I couldn't connect with my students. I didn't really know them as human beings. Something was missing. And as my professional life was falling apart, so too was my personal life. And I was depressed for quite a while, until the traditional formula of time, of the love from friends and family, and of course therapy got me back on my feet. But something else helped me during this time too, and that was mindfulness. Mindfulness is simply paying attention to the present moment as it is. It's about noticing your thoughts and your emotions, noticing what's going on for you in the, in the present moment without judgment. For me, it's a conscious way of engaging in life. And I have to tell you guys, I think mindfulness matters a lot. Practicing mindfulness made my personal life way better. I felt more connected to myself. And when I got back to the classroom, it made my professional life better too. Because I was connected with myself, I was also more connected with my students. We were able to create relationship, and that's where I think lots of deep learning occurs. Don't get me wrong, it, you know, it didn't happen all of a sudden, but I did notice one day, I was like, wait a minute, I haven't cried between classes for a little while. <laughs> Something's going on here. And I had more energy, and I was genuinely interested in, in being with my students. And don't get me wrong, teaching was still really, really hard, but it was more manageable, more enjoyable. I'll set the record straight here. Mindfulness is not about having a guru or wearing white linen, and it's not even about being happy all the time. I hate to break it to you. It's not about that. Mindfulness is about being aware of your whole self in your moments and encountering life as it is. The good, the bad, the indifferent. I think, whoa, wow, that is strong. Um, sorry. Um, I think that why we need mindfulness in education, for me, is best summed up by this quote. Somewhere, the quote. Oh, look at that. The highest function of education is to bring about an integrated individual who is capable of dealing with life as a whole. I love that. That, to me, makes a lot of sense. But before you can deal with life as a whole, I think you have to deal with yourself as a whole. Among other things, we're made up of mind, body, and heart. Negotiating our way through this human journey requires us to employ all of these components in relationship to one another. Education has done well to engage our brains and sometimes our bodies, but there's a real lack in education when it comes to actually teaching us how our minds work, particularly in relation to emotions. I told you that I used to cry a lot. Uh, I also was really volatile. I could go from zero to 60 in 0.2 seconds, really, like perfectly calm to irate in the blink of an eye. My poor family, I really, I know they used to have to like tread lightly around Amy because you never know when she's going to blow, right? Ah. I'm really sorry to my family. Um, and it's not that I don't get upset or angry anymore, of course I do. But now I seem to be able to see my emotions as they're arising and there's a little bit of space and in that time I can decide to respond rather than to react to a situation. And I think that's a key life skill. There's a lot of talk these days about 21st century learning skills. And life skills are a part of those, but really, as we know, much of the focus in education tends to be on tech skills. If we're really interested in helping students deal with life, 
We need to teach them how their minds work. And mindfulness can do this. That's one of the reasons why I think it belongs in education. Much of education these days is fueled by extrinsic rewards. About, you know, it's about com competition and comparison. It's about striving for some future accolade. Well, what if we just shift the focus of education just a tiny little bit? What if instead of telling students to focus on some end result, what if we actually help them focus and encourage them to focus on the very pursuit itself? What if excellence in education means that a student has a better understanding of who they are and how they want to be in this world, moment by moment? What if we encourage our teachers to do the same? Aristotle said that an educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Mindfulness helped me to acknowledge and listen to my heart. And my heart says we need to help students do the same. I know, it might sound a little airy-fairy, right? A little idealistic. Oh, just need to listen to your heart, right? Well, the fact is that listening to our heart and understanding our emotions is key to living a fulfilled life. It's what helps us make us, makes us more authentically ourselves. And it's hard to do. But mindfulness is a, a practical tool that can help students cultivate this inner understanding. It's a realistic way for students to understand how their mind, body, and heart work in any given moment. So what if training for excellence in education sometimes looked like this? Go ahead, try it, take a breath. And maybe where you are right now, however you're sitting, just notice yourself in the chair. I invite you, if you're comfortable, to close your eyes or put them down at half, half mast a little bit. And notice your breath in your own body. Where is it? Maybe it's in your stomach. Maybe you notice your breath in your chest. Maybe in your nostrils. Just notice it without judgment. And I invite you to take one deep, intentional breath with me. So, training for excellence in education is breathing. Yeah, I know, it's not very glamorous or scintillating. You know, it's not even that complicated, but it's extremely effective. Research shows that mindfulness reduces stress increases focus and concentration, and improves overall well-being. Mindfulness brings us back to the most basic function of our body, and that's our breath. But we rarely, if ever, encourage awareness of the breath. But you can change your awareness of yourself with the breath, because pausing and stopping allows you to bring your mind back into your body. Usually, usually the mind's out here somewhere, in the future, wondering about lunch or something you might eat, or when, how, what will I eat? And then all of a sudden you think about maybe dinner, and what do you have to do for dinner, and I've got to go pick up some meat. And, you know. Or our mind is back here, you know, concerned about the past, or something like, maybe I shouldn't have brought up lunch during my speech, right? That's probably a bad idea, and nobody's listening to me anymore. Right? Our mind is usually over there or over here, but taking a conscious breath allows us to bring our minds back into our bodies, and our bodies can only ever be in the present moment in the parlance of our times, as Drew mentioned earlier, this trending, right? Mindfulness is trending. The, the wave of mindfulness is cresting in the corporate world, in mental health arenas, and even some governments. And it is slowly trickling into education. But why only slowly? Why? Mindfulness is so simple. Anybody can do it at any age, 
anywhere, it's portable, right? And it's accessible because what it is really is an, an innate capacity that we all have. And here's the clincher, it's really cheap. Dear school budgets, breathing is free, right? It's free. So, you know, I think, oh gosh, I'm so sorry that I do that. Breathing is free. Um, and it, it really works. It helped me be a better teacher. And I even brought some mindfulness, simple mindfulness practices into my classroom, ringing a chime bar at the beginning of class just to center the students and myself, using it between transitions in the class, taking deep breaths before a test. And the atmosphere in my classroom changed. It felt calmer. Students started asking for mindfulness moments on their own. They just wanted time sometime to just be, to integrate what they were learning and what they were feeling. And they even started using it outside of the classroom, in other, cla other classrooms. Um, sometimes they told me they'd use it on the sports field or even before going to bed, just to have some stillness in their lives. This really excited me because it told me that they knew they had an internal tool that they could use to help them deal with life situations. Sure, mindfulness can increase academic achievement and reduce stress. Studies have shown this. But it can also provide students with a tool to help them deal with life. If we're really interested in doing this, if we want to help students deal with life as a whole, we have to start teaching as if life really matters. And to connect to life, you have to first connect to yourself. Mindfulness made my life way better, and I believe it can make our students' lives better too. We know that changing the structure of education is going to take some time, but in the meanwhile, by practicing mindfulness, students and teachers can start transforming education from the inside out. Thank you. <laughs>